Mikhail, massive congratulations. What a battle. How proud are you of your team? Yeah, so happy. It's been 14 years, so that's a long time for a club like Arsenal. Not to do what we've done today, but uh, it shows how difficult it is. We have to really dig in today and, uh, and find the magic moment that uh, we found at the end. But uh, so proud and I'm so happy. The magic moment, and it came from David Rea, your goalkeeper. Did you always believe he was cut out for these big moments? Yeah, we did. We started to create an unbelievable energy as well in the stadium, and um, now we're all pushing uh, to get it done, and, and together we've done it. You were watching on when he made those two saves in the penalty shootout. How were the nerves? Yeah, you are very nervous. You are hoping for the best, but uh, you know that it's a bit of a lottery. Uh, we had our preparation yesterday and the day before just in case and uh, it really helps so credit um, to the to the goalkeeper coaches as well and uh, and everybody that contributed how much credit do porto deserve as well for making this such a difficult game yeah it's really difficult to play against them they are a really really competitive team you don't get many moments in the game when you can control the game because if a stop a start direct play battle after battle and uh, yeah, they are a really good side it must have taken, though, a proper team performance from your boys to get through this. Yes, we did. And we scored a goal in a really important moment. Uh, we tried to generate chances. We had two or three, not many, but this is Europe and this is this competition as well. But at the end, we managed to do it. It got emotional out there at times as well. Both managers booked tonight. It must be so difficult to keep those feelings in check. Yeah, it's a lot at stake and every detail is important. You defending your team and, and every decision you wanted to go your way and uh, that's part of the game. An incredible atmosphere in the Emirates tonight as well, Mikel. How much do you love these fans? Thank you so much, honestly. We absolutely love them, uh, the energy that they brought, uh, how positive they are the whole game uh, with the team and the way they contributed. They made us win, as simple as that. And you mentioned it already, the round of 16 curse is over for Arsenal. You join the likes of Man City, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, PSG and Barcelona mm. in the quarterfinals. What does it mean, Mikel? Unbelievable. Uh, that's what we want to be. And, uh, and we've been patient and we worked so hard. A lot of people made a lot of good decisions and showed a lot of courage as well in difficult moments. But uh, this is where we want to be. Well done tonight. Thank you so much. Because he is speaking now with Jules Breach. Yeah, nights like these in the Champions League need heroes. And David, tonight, that was you. What are the emotions like right now? No, obviously, it's a, it's a great feeling, you know. Especially for me, personally, first, first time in the Champions League. First time of the club in so many years that we got to the quarterfinals. But it's great to the team, obviously. I think we played a really, really good game from the, from the start. We dominated. We created chances. But then it went down to penalties and... And I'm there. We, we've been working a lot on penalties this year. Because of nights like this, we, we need to be really, really good. And obviously, the, all the hard work with the goalie coach and with the team is, is paid off, obviously. It's a, it's a great moment. It's a great moment personally and, and collectively. Two brilliant saves in the shootout as well. You had to really hold your nerve, didn't you? Yeah, uh, I should have saved three, but <laughs> I should have saved the other one. But no, obviously, over the moon to to save two penalties in the Champions League to get through the to the to the quarterfinals of course so many teams come here to the Emirates David and they get rolled over you guys recently have been putting three four five goals past teams here how much credit do Porto deserve for making this so difficult tonight oh they they made it so difficult over there and, and here they they play their game and we obviously we scored the first goal in the first half and obviously played to them they they pressed us high they, they didn't give us that fluidity that we needed but like I said we scored the goal that we, we needed and, and it went down to, to penalties and it's just crazy, it's just a crazy moment Well that Trossard goal feels like hours ago now yeah. doesn't it? How much mental and physical strength did it take for you guys to get through this? Yeah, no, so obviously apart from physically for, for the boys, mentally is, is the toughest bit, especially for me like to be focused every every second, every, every ball that you cannot switch off but now the team, the team just played really, really well, and the main thing we kept a clean sheet. We 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 scored the goal, and then we we got through to the to the quarterfinals. You've already said personally what it means for you to be playing in the Champions League. You're into the quarterfinals along with Manchester City, Real Madrid, PSG, Bayern Munich, and tonight Barcelona also through. Yeah. What does it mean to be there? No, it means it means everything. You know, you you play you play football for these kind of things, and. I'm lucky enough to, to be playing for Arsenal and to be in the Champions League and lucky enough to, to get through to the quarterfinals this time. So 
over the moon. I'm just going to celebrate it with the with the team and and enjoy the night and just just be just be the, the way it is. Yeah. Enjoy your celebration. Thank you very much. Thank you. What a night where we questioned the resolve of Arsenal in previous years and the fact that they couldn't get past this stage for about seven times in a row. They've managed to do it this time. Martin, for you, what does this mean? Well, it, what it means is momentum. And it means that then Arsenal now can go into that Man City game full of confidence. You know it's the Lions' den. We know what they've achieved. Six trophies, is it, last year? Man City, uh, it's the ultimate test. But they go there now really confident, in good form. I think it would have been a bit of a downer if they'd have lost this tonight and then gone into the City game. Of course, they're out of the FA Cup. But now this just keeps it ticking along beautifully. The players, they grow from it. There's a lot of confidence now. And it's a really big night where they can feel like they're going to be potentially be winners. You know, because that's the, that's the thing now. Is that, it's a bit early, man. Don't go, go, go to the Come next on. stage. Let's not go you, there, Martin. We want to go to the next stage. And you yeah. want to win something. I'm putting it out there. They want to win something. Of course so you want to win. Going there. But I think the bigger thing today, that they showed a spirit. Mm. They never looked in complete control. I think a lot of people expected who walked into the stadium today, like me, like us, we were talking. We expected Arsenal to control the, the tempo of this game, be aggressive on the front foot. But you realise, actually, at this level, there are teams that can come and go toe-to-toe -to -toe well, and have the confidence yeah. to do that. But I think the spirit is the overriding factor that I see here. The, the scenes after, the, fan, the players, the connection to the fans now, that creates a strong bond that I can, I can feel in this place now. And that will hold them in good stead in the latter stage of this competition and also the run into the Premier League. Should we have a look at the misses, or the saves, I should say, for De Rea? Because we're talking about Wendell all night, because he, he really made life difficult, didn't he, for Saka. Yeah. Have a look at this one. Definitely touch the fingertip. Perhaps he'll say, I, if I were well, Ray, I'd definitely say a save back. He's got, he's got a you? Fame, he yeah, to. of course. And I think Ali says it right in commentary because he deserves any kind of lock there because it could have come back off him, couldn't mm. it? Yep. And gone into the goal. So that was really a moment. It was, it, it was, to be honest, it was almost typical of the evening. It was actually on a fingertip knife edge, wasn't it? The whole match. And this sort of sums it up there. That was a much better save, of course. Um, and he looks. He played his part tonight. I think it's one of them. There was a anxiety in the stadium when he first took, he came into the Arsenal team. Mm -hmm. And you see now there's a belief in him and there's a unity now. And there's an electricity now in the stadium that we haven't seen for many a year. That's 14 years since they've made it to this quarterfinal stage. So we just need to feed off of that so the season keeps going in that upward trajectory. There are moments for players, though, in their, in their careers at their clubs where you go, and that was a moment for me that really changed it. My, my, the, the connection with the fans, the, the belief now from myself, but also them in me. This could be one of those moments. For a goalkeeper, penalty shootouts, out, shoot outs, it's never in their favour, but they can become the heroes, and today he's the hero. Mm -hmm. Galeno was the hero from the first leg. Let's have a look at his penalty as well. How much credit will you give the, uh, the save for Dabarrea in this instance, Rio? Yeah, it's a much more clean save, I think. Uh, Galeno was was nowhere near to, as, as sharp or as bright as he was in the first leg. But um, this comes up this moment as a penalty shooter. You know what I have to say? I was so impressed with Saka's penalty. It was a ridiculous penalty. This was, this was the one that Raya saved, though. But he gets across quickly um, and he gets a good clean pair of hands on it, which is what you need in these situations because as I said, with the nerves, you can all easily have butter wrists and that can go yeah, through you. 100%. But you have to say the penalty takers for Arsenal, they're emphatic. You know, like every single one of them, and the tension was just ratcheting mm. up that little bit extra. So it's great to see them come through in the end. Here they are. Captain Martin Odegaard stepped up first, Rio. No doubts at all when he steps up. This guy's a, the ultimate technician. Have this it. guy, mentally, seems like he's just cool as you like, doesn't he? Saka as well. This was after the <laughs> miss, Wendell's miss. That's quite a pressured moment, too. That was well, a great penalty, that yeah, one. Yeah, 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 world class, that one. But the, <laughs> this one here, I mean, I, I was worried for Declan because it was a, do you know, it was a hard evening for him, I think, in that midfield, covering a lot of distance. And you wonder, was it going to go against him? But it just shows you that when the big moments come, he turns up. Builds mentality, surely, when you go through something like this. Yeah, 100. As a group. Yeah. Like, none, none of these have won together yet. So, as a group, they're just, they're just ticking the box of certain, certain hurdles that are in their way. A penalty shooter in the knockout stage of the Champions League, they've not done that together. Mm. So now they've got through that. What confidence that builds in that change room is immeasurable. And I think going into the, the I keep saying it, but the final running is all about momentum and maintaining that confidence. And here they are today. They didn't play particularly well. No. Loads of room for improvement. Yeah. But they got it through. I was going to say that. What would Mikel Arteta take from this match as a whole, do you think, Martin? Well, I think now that it's about back to the Premier League, isn't it? And it's that territory, that's familiar territory for Arsenal. The fans now got their Arsenal back again. 
This is a competitive team that's at boiling point. And he's, he wants to win every game. And they came up against sort of wily old Fox, really. I thought yeah. their manager tonight. 50 games he's played in the Champions League and managed this manager. Mm. And look, look at our manager. What is this, his eighth game tonight? So there's a big, there's a big gap there. But he closed that gap. And he, he learns every time he, he manages for me. And the team look, grows with him. Yeah. So we take that forward now, as I say, to the next big game. And that's, it's great to be. You want this. You dream about this, don't you, as a kid, to be involved in the big games. You've got to love it. And Arsenal are really doing well right now. There'll be fans in, in the stands tonight that will have enjoyed that beyond measure, will have watched that and would have been like, wow, to, to win it when you're struggling, that's not necessarily got control of the game. And then for it to go through extra time in the way it did and then for it to go down to penalties and to witness that, that's that's just so monumental for so many fans, Rio. Yeah, well, we, we're walking around the side of the stadium I mean, of the pitch, and we're looking and we're seeing all the young fans there. This is their first moment of seeing Arsenal at this stage of a Champions League competition, winning a knockout game under these circumstances. These are memories that are being created, and it's wonderful for these players. Um, and I, I think they're a, a genuine hard, hard, hard opposition for anybody left in the competition. I don't care. Man City, over two legs, difficult game for them, because Arsenal are a team, I think, that can match most teams left in this competition. Whether they'll beat them, but I think they can go close to anyone at the moment. I'm just enjoying the fans singing that. Waka waka na na na. Kai Havertz scores. Do you know the words? No. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's I'm not, not a singer. I'm not, not going to I'm a dancer, I'm not, not a singer. singer. But, the, but ultimately, the essence of that song is 60 million down the drain, Kai Havertz scores again. And, and he was one of the scorers tonight in the penalty shootout. Yeah, I mean, that's just the thing. You know, I, and I had no doubt, really. It was lovely the way he came up, just that little chimmy, that dummy, and just tucked it. He made it look so easy. Mm. I might even fancy taking one myself and just try, <laughs> try and copy him. But in the moment, it's very difficult to do that. There's no way you. I can imagine you walking up to a penalty in a penalty shooter. No, I had a, chance, I had a chance in the Cup Winners' Cup Did you? to take one, and I got into a fight with Steve Bold, actually. Oh, and luckily, you? David wow. Seaman saved the penalty. So neither of us had to go up and take it. Hey, so who would have won in a set. fight between you and Steve Bold? Oh, that would have been interesting, who, yeah. I don't know who I put my money behind. Listen, sometimes, and I know it's your job as, as pundits, and you have to make decisions quite quickly but sometimes is it too early to judge a player when he changes teams like in the way that Kai Havertz was and people out there will say look he's enjoying a purple patch at the moment it might not last but is there something different about the way he's developing under Mikel Arteta? I think Mikel Arteta has to take huge credit with the way that he's, he's managed him I think he came in and, and people were questioning it a little bit um, the price tag um, but he's really managed him well in, into the team. Um, he's been so, The approach today from Porto is slightly different from that first leg, but the all-important goal in the first half came from Trossard, Rio. Yeah, well, fantastically worked goal. I think this is the only time we've seen Odegaard face up on the edge of the, uh, Porto's box. And wow, wasn't it wonderful when he got there. His clarity, his vision, he sits, shifts it back onto his left foot. That's a trigger for Trossard to move and he gets it through the eye of a needle. It's a wonderful finish in the end, but the move is what I love here. The movement, the timing, and Odegaard, listen, this is seventh assist this season, matching last season. So look at that little bit of time. You can't give somebody like that, a locksmith, the keys there and the time to open you up because he will do it. It's a wonderful pass. Look at that, inch perfect yeah. and a great finish. I agree, and of course Trossard is trying to affect the back of that de defence. Pepe probably just a little bit too deep. I think he probably feels personally he could have done a little bit better. But nonetheless, that was a vital goal for Arsenal because they were a little bit tentative. It was difficult for them. It was a combination of Porto really pressing really, very high and making it nervy for Arsenal. So that goal settles them down nicely for half-time. Certainly that high press at the beginning for Porto did create their own variation of chances, really, didn't it? Yeah, Martin mentioned there about surprising us in the way they approached this game. We didn't think they'd come up and press so high. They, I think early on, they kind of made them a little bit nervy, Arsenal, the back line. And here, creating... Half chance is not a perfect chance, it's a half chance, but being brave and stepping up the pitch allows them to create these moments. And they didn't do this in the first leg. They pretty well sat back and let Arsenal enjoy the ball a bit. Arsenal really didn't do a lot with it. This is a totally different game. And they came, when they, they showed their teeth as well at times, and it was a little bit nervy from an Arsenal point of view. But if you look at the man at the two teams, this is the fifth time now that this club has, has qualified his team for this stage of the tournament. So there's an awful lot more experience, and I think Arsenal will, are just growing into this game now tonight. And those positive signs, Saka Trossard, much more involved in the game at this point versus last, uh, well, last leg. Yeah, well, what we said last game was that the wingers aren't getting into the game. They found a way now to get the ball to those wide players, and they're, they're proving dangerous in the fact there that Trossard gets us the first goal of the night. Okay, right. And welcome to the Arsenal and the Porto game. The Arsenal played the Porto uh, in the uh, second aggregate. In the first aggregate, uh, Porto scored one goal in the extra time on the Arsenal side. 
while uh, from the Arsenal side today, the first goal from the uh, Luke Trussard scored the goal in the first half at the 41 minute for the Arsenal against the Porto. Uh, there is some fight has been seen between the Trussard, Declan Rice and between the Porto people, uh, Porto players. The match uh, is started and 54 minutes has been completed and the game is on the Emirat Stadium, the home ground for the Gunners. Uh, there is uh, some thing three quarters of the way through this last 16 time. We are on square as also take a 1 0 lead into half time at the Emirates. The Gunners were frustrated early on as Porto made a a short start starting to curve out clear cut chances. Odegaard pulled a short wide before PP's accident defensive had prevented Havertz from loading home. Porto caused problems at the other end as Wilson forced Roya into action, but just as the home fans started to grow restless, also leveled the tie. Odegaard produced a wonderful touch and pass to release Trussard, who made no mistake with his finish into the bottom right corner. The momentum seems to be with the Otata men's now, but the visitors have shown enough to warn the Gunners against complacency. It's all to play for in the second half, which is coming right up now. There is a fight between the Arsenal and the uh, uh, Gunners player. So, these all are things that. Uh, William Saliba do. Uh, the pre-game analysis between those two sides Atata made just one change from the Austin team which beat Banfield 2-1 in the Premier League on Saturday with Raya returning in goal after being ineligible against his parent club as Ram Sadari drops the bench. Jeff Wright Martinelli is out after an injury. Uh, forced him to withdraw from the Brazil squad earlier on Tuesday. When Havertz leads the line once again, having knotted in each of the last four Premier League games, can be ready with that form on to the European stage. Porto lineup, meanwhile, is unchanged from that which beat Porto United 3 0 in the Premier League on Friday when Galino joined Nico and Pepe. Aquino on the score sheet. The big news for the visitor is that striker Thaimi is fit enough for a place on the bench after missing the first leg with a high thigh injury. But he wants to keep his place in the starting 11. So, this is all about the Arsenal and the Porto side.